Hello, good day today. Today I dusted off an old deck that I used to play evolving around the Goldspan Dragon and the ability to buff it in one turn. So you can play it, it hastes to the opponent and you buff it as much as you can to up to 20 damage. And then you basically have a one turn kill. So what you do is play Goldspan, buff it with a number of spells. A Beaming Defiance also gives it Hexproof. A run Amok gives it Trample as well. Uh, Kaya gives it double strike as well. You have to foretell it or you don't have the mana because it's three and you only get two from targeting or with attacking it. So whatever you can also do is when you don't foretell it before you play a raise the effigy or you just target it with your own spiteful hazard to get one extra mana so you can play it even without a foretell. So basically get it to a 10-10 with double strike or a 20-20. Or 8-8 eight, eight, double strike, do 16 damage and use the Kazul's Fury to sacrifice it at the end of combat and do the additional 8. In the early turns you just have some spells to prepare because you really need to draw the Goldspan Dragon and enough spells to buff it up to the 20 damage. So we play 3 expressive iterations, 4 seize the spoils to also ramp up a little bit. So you, sometimes you need that 4 turn kill. So you need to treasure one turn before, so you can get a cast at turn four. Or a showdown of the skulls, very useful because it helps you find all the spells that you need and also gives the plus one plus one counters as well. One elite spellbinder, just because you sometimes need to have a blocker, you need to look in the opponent's hand. You need to remove that 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 spell that counters it or that spell that destroys it whenever we don't have a beaming defiance or sometimes we just need some pressure and we can also buff this as well although that's usually not the intention so far i was a bit surprised i played 7-1 um so 88 percent win rate i don't think that's really representative because whenever you don't draw the goldspan dragon you basically just lose but there are many ways to get it and whenever you have it the deck is, is pretty good and especially the meta now is, is, is pretty pretty nice to a deck like this because the meta is not that quick. Usually it builds up to get a lot of value and when you when they don't expect the gold spend turn one kill then basically they're just done. So it's really a best of one deck, best of three, and this price is gone so it doesn't work anymore. But in best of one you can get a pretty decent win rates and also very quick games and it's pretty fun to play to surprise the opponent hopefully you'll enjoy the game if so please like and subscribe it would really help me and to grow the channel and for now just let's dive in No gold span, only buffing spells, so nothing to really get there. So I really have to mulligan this hand. Still no gold span, at least I have to seize the spoils, which will help me. I can turn to foretell the Kaya. So I think I have to keep this one because if I mulligan again, I'm only down to five cards. So I keep the six, definitely keep the seize the spoils. Kaya is good. I think I can I need a red mana. Probably I'll put this back in my deck. This is also very unfortunate. Two tap plants. I don't think I have many of those. At least not the red white, the, the blue white, but I just have to deal with it. Okay, at least no very aggressive deck, so I have some time. I don't think I really need the elite. But I think for now I'll just foretell. The next turn I can play the Seize the Spoils. Probably lose the elite and hopefully I'll draw a gold, gold spin. But I have some time. 
17. Okay, that's really no problem. Okay, that's a good draw as well. But at one point I will need to get to the gold span. Fifteen, still time. So a gold span now would have a certain kill. Okay, very good. In hand, back. And now just survive. Hopefully he plays a big spell. If not, I just have a Beaming Defiance to protect it. Okay. Good for me. I think that's good game. I keep this this back. This should be enough. Good game. On the play. So that's nice. Man is good. Hand is pretty bad, but this will help. This will help as well. Some removal. So I'll definitely keep this. Okay, I have to be quick here. Luckily I'm on the play. So far this is the only deck I lost against. So it might happen again. Spike, spike kill is not gonna do much good. Hopefully I have two more turns. With a little luck I do. So I'll go to 13. Yeah, that is a problem. So that brings me to 10. So I need to do something now. So this deck is just too quick. I can have a turn, turn four kill, but then the hand should be perfect. So next turn I'll get exactly ten, but you will have a way to to give me more. I don't think this is uh, going to help me. It would have helped me. So next turn I can play the gold span. Make it six six seven seven eight eight nine nine. So that's eighteen damage. Kazul. So that's another nine. So twenty-seven damage next turn. 
but unfortunately I'm just not gonna get there. On the draw, combo wise, it's pretty good, it's just not that quick, but I think I just have to go for it. So this is four, seven, eight, so it's 16 damage in hand already. Trample. And black is usually good for me. Blue is not that good. But there are not that many counters in the meta anymore. So what do I need more? Probably uh, expressive. Because I do have 4, 5, 6, 7, 10. I do have it complete. I just need the opponent to tap out. On the other hand, I can't play this. I need this as protection. So probably the run amok is better in my hand. So next turn I'm going to play the showdown. Maybe if he has a counter I can pull it. Elite Spellbinder would be nice as well. Okay. Let's see whether he has it. He does have a counter. Backup gold spend, so that will be good of game because I can do the trick twice now. On the play, hand is very reliant on what I'm gonna draw, but I think I'm just gonna go for it. One gold spend, and I should be good. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so. Plenty of damage. Just need some cards to set it up. Okay. Let's see what the opponent has to offer. Kaito Celestus. Don't really care about any of those cards. If they play Celestis, then they have more mana. So I'd rather have them curve out into these annoying cards. The two, three drops keeps them occupied as well. This is the one that does the early damage. But he doesn't have any blue. So next turn he's going for the Celestis. Both. But I don't want them, him to play these two. This does most damage, most pressure. So in comes the Celestis. Okay, one more land, please. So how far can I get this? Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. I might not even need the gold spend here.
Okay, there it is. Consider yourself fortunate, Arthur. You deal with this So this one will absorb three, but I have first strike. We established I can make it nine. Which is just not enough. So we'll play the showdown. This hand does give away a little bit what I'm gonna do. But on the other hand, what's your opponent gonna do? That's an expensive one. Thank you for that. Your way on these dark streets. Be brave. Okay. One mana open. Now it's my turn. Another gold spent. Cancel. What am I doing here? First, need to make the treasures here. Okay, so I think I would have had like two lethal double striking creatures here. A quick recap on the games. The hands were. Quite unfortunate this series. Played a lot against the red white, and you see immediately that that's really the the problem of this deck. So if you have any suggestions to improve to to counter the red white aggro decks, that would be very helpful. For the rest, of the, the game is are really in my favor. So basically, this only new hype in the meta is destroying the win rates. It's still 63%, which is not that bad. And it's very fun to play, but we need to figure out something to uh, to counter this uh, this aggro deck. I hope you uh, you have some suggestions so we can improve and uh, make another video.